we're on Route 9, which is better known as Cash Ave, Newcastle Avenue. Take a left at this street coming up right here, up a little bit further. You see that little street right here? Just keep on going straight so you can't go no further. This is where I would take my dates, and it's so secluded that you could scream me. Nobody will hear you. You know, I thought it was a good spot, but you know what? It could have been a bad spot, too, because I could have got killed down here. But that's the price you got to pay when you're out here on drugs. You know, when you're homeless and you're hungry and you don't know where to sleep and you got to get money for a motel or, or whatever, you'll do anything for a small piece of paper that carries a lot of weight. We don't really want to live like this. We're doing this because we're on drugs, because something happened to us somewhere along the line where we became damaged goods. But we're not unfixable. We just need a second chance. That's all. We want to change. Crime, violence, drug abuse, and poverty are issues that plague communities across the state of Delaware, often born out of a lack of opportunity, access, education, and hope. Delaware is also confronted with the issue of prostitution. Women in the life are historically cast off from society, regardless of how or why they've come to sell their bodies to survive. But because of a coalition of dedicated citizens, change is on the horizon, and these often forgotten women will now have a voice. In the Court of Common Pleas for Newcastle County, we would see the same women over and over again. And seeing these women on a frequent basis with charges uh, that suggested they were on the street was what gave us the feeling that we needed a prostitution diversion program. And what we were seeing is individuals being repeatedly arrested for um, order maintenance type of crimes, loitering, minor drug offenses, minor theft, and they would be adjudicated and they'd be right back on the street. The problem of prostitution in both Wilmington and Newcastle County, it's certainly a, a very serious concern. Uh, it creates a significant quality of life concerns for the residents of the communities that are affected by prostitution. Um, it adversely affects the living conditions amongst that community. It certainly generates a significant quantity of calls for service for a variety of crimes. So overall, it has an absolute detrimental effect to the community. We knew we were having a problem. And when we talked about it anecdotally, we knew it was a pretty huge percentage of the female population we were seeing that might be involved in this kind of activity. Um, and it was disturbing to us because, of course, nobody chooses to be in that situation. The paths that led them to where they ended up were just tragic. There is a revolving door when it comes to the detentioners who come into this facility. With that, it makes it very difficult to target programs to address their needs when they come here. I realize that we are ill-equipped as a court to deal with that population, a uh, very special population. Um, and so we identified a need, but we had no way to meet that need. It got to the point where we began to think either I'm going to see these women again on a capious calendar or see their names in the obituary pages. I mean, that's, that's the sad reality. Women that involve themselves in prostitution do so because of problems like poverty, mental illness, uh, drug addiction, alcohol addiction. These women have been traumatized all their life. For these women, the struggle to stay alive, support their children, obtain legal employment, and overcome racial and gender discrimination intersects with untreated trauma. Sex workers are known to have more traumatic experiences than most people. Understanding and responding to this tragic reality is the only way to stop this cycle. Trauma is an intense stressor that um, 
threatens to overwhelm a person's capacity to cope. Life experiences that include emotional, sexual, physical abuse, which most people would recognize as traumatic, but also experiences of severe abandonment and neglect. A lot of the women that I talked to out there and used to get high with, all of us had, you know, just in conversation while we're getting high, has experienced some kind of trauma, some kind of abuse. You know, whether it's from a boyfriend beating their ass, taking their money, you know, while they're out there now, uh, whether it's um, verbally abused, hearing they're no good, they're ugly, they're fat, they're stupid. That's what I heard growing up. I'm fat, I'm stupid, I'm ugly. My father wanted a son, not a daughter. You know, and with that kind of stuff, hearing that growing up from somebody that you're supposed to idolize, that really played a major part of my low self-worth. Usually trauma, in, in the context of what we're talking about, um, involves a real, or a perceived threat of death or almost death. So in other words, a person would fear for their life. Yeah, I probably would be dead somewhere. Yeah, I'm afraid to get killed. Um, yeah, that I'm gonna get killed. I'd be dead probably. Generally, traumatic life events are very sudden, they're unpredictable, and the person feels and is pretty much out of control to, to do anything to stop it. <laughs> I'm not in control of my life. I don't feel like I have control of my life. Wow. I know I'm not in control, because I wake up every morning, well, hey, if I even go to sleep. Being homeless is one of the most traumatic events that anyone could ever experience. Some people turn to substances, alcohol and drugs to kind of numb the pain or push the pain back. How old were you when you started prostituting? 18. And doing drugs? 18. I'm a drug addict and I live day by day. Having a drug problem, it covers up a lot of feelings and a lot of stuff that you're trying to escape. The undeniable consequences of prostitution on individual lives and the community as a whole mobilized a group of public health and criminal justice professionals to come together as a coalition to merge expertise, forge communication, develop programming, and lay the groundwork for a new model of collaboration. The Delaware Coalition for Health and Justice is made up of a dynamic group of stakeholders that have come together to address the issue of prostitution in Newcastle County, specifically individuals engaged in survival sex work. Coalition members are representatives from community-based organizations, law enforcement, the courts, and the prison system. But most importantly, coalition members also include individuals from our population of focus. The objective of the coalition has been to provide gender-appropriate services to women in the life. Thanks to a generous grant from the Office on Women's Health, we've been able to create an incredible program called WISH, Women in Supportive Health, which includes Brandywine Counseling's Outreach, Beautiful Gates Care Advocacy, SOAR's Trauma Treatment, and Surge's Advocacy Training. What the coalition found when we started doing research was that women who are engaged in prostitution have a plethora of needs which are currently being unmet. I would say what works for this population is a combination of interventions. At the basis, you have to have outreach because this is not a population who's going to come knocking on your doors. If they did, things would be very easy. So you have to have good, comprehensive, sensitive, culturally appropriate outreach. Somebody you could go to to tell them exactly the kind of problems you had. Somebody who's caring, somebody who understands, somebody who, somebody like you guys who get out here and does footwork and really gets in touch with people. The purpose of the WISH program essentially is to work with women who don't have a voice, who have been discriminated against because of their situation. And I see myself as a care advocate, essentially doing that, advocating for these ladies, providing with them with the tools that they need to empower themselves. The goal of the WISH program is about building bridges, making it easier for these women to access the services that they need and want. We all need to learn um, about what, what, what life looks like from the eyes of someone else. And I think that the WISH advocates can help everybody else understand these women better. The complex trauma histories of these women indicated that a traditional court program may not meet all of their needs. 
so a specialized problem-solving court docket and probation unit had to be created. Research shows this approach is effective in reducing recidivism, improving community safety, and saving taxpayer dollars. This collaborative effort by a team of judges, probation officers, and care advocates is known as TIP, Trauma-Informed Probation. The reason we think trauma-informed probation services will be effective is that the evidence-based research suggests to us that a confrontational model is not effective with a woman who, or a woman or a man, not just a woman, a woman or a man who has been traumatized. Well, trauma is something new that we've been looking at at the Department of Correction. We're taking universal precautions. We're saying everyone has trauma. We may not know it, they may not know it, but if we treat everyone as if they do, then we're covered, we're safe. We need to care, but we have to be firm, fair, and consistent. We really see that the offenders feel like the probation officer cares about them, is invested in their future, and is upholding the mission of the department at the same time. We need to start asking them what happened to them. And I've started getting stories since I've been here. What happened to you? What's brought you here? I've asked the woman before me, I see your history includes the following. Have you been a victim of trauma? And I actually had one woman say to me, no one has ever asked me why. You are the first person to ask me why. The coalition has reinforced efforts to engage this population by developing a comprehensive, community-based referral network by providing trauma-informed and gender-appropriate treatment options, as well as other supportive services, we are beginning to transform the system. If they had like a house or a program, a building for where the women on the street can go to get some help, to get a good meal, to talk to a counselor. Some girls are just prostitutes. Some of them may not have a drug addiction. They just doing it for money because they're homeless or they got three or four kids and they need different types of help. If there were a program that you could access, what would you want it to include? More something. So a program where you could have your kids with you or something? Put people places where they can live. You know what I'm saying? Be happy. A job, stable housing, a way out. This coalition was interested in designing a community-based program that could be an alternative to a woman serving time in prison or paying a fine. What our goal is, is to help each resident get to the next step. If that's transitional housing, if it's permanent supportive housing, if it's her own apartment, if it's some other kind of program, if it's rehab, we just want to help people get from their immediate crisis to the next step. It's a chance to start over. That's what Hope House is about. There are long-term health consequences uh, as well as short-term health consequences for women involved in these activities. One of the things we're very concerned about is access to primary health care. What we need to do as a community is lower those barriers and provide for them a way to access care in a way that they're comfortable with and can help address their health risks. What the women could expect in coming into uh, the WISH group, first and foremost, is safety, creating emotional as well as physical safety. We're also empowering them, giving them tools that they can turn to on their own without the help of someone else so they can learn it in group and then take it back and something they can utilize easily. We tried to provide them a line of hope, you know, and uh, we tried to, if we can't assist them today, then there's tomorrow, or we're going to figure out what we need to do in order to get them in treatment. Therapy does work. Therapy does help people. People can get better after a trauma or a series of traumas. I think, too, there's a lot of shame that's involved. And so unless there are places and people who can accept the women for who they are, us, we're all broken. I haven't met an unbroken person yet. And so if we can cut through the shame and uh, accept a woman for who she is, then her strengths become evident. You know, she's not just a sex worker. The obstacles these women face may seem insurmountable and the fiscal challenges the system is confronted with discouraging. 
But women who engage in sex work are not just victims. They are survivors. They are resilient. They are persistent. They have a willingness to seek help. The coalition recognizes that we have a responsibility to these women to engage them without judgment, provide services without barriers, empower them to release the shame, and encourage them to change their lives. I think the thing that is so interesting about the program is one, that it takes an absolutely marginalized community of women. These women are on nobody's top list of people we want to do nice things for or people who we think are just like us. You know, I didn't say when I, uh, when I grow up I want to be a prostitute and a drug addict. We made mistakes, we're not a mistake. So we all need a second chance. I think we all deserve a second chance. Do you have particular hopes and dreams that you want to fulfill? Yes, I'm gonna go back to high school and I'm gonna go to college. I wanna go back to school. One day, believe it or not, I'd like to be a drug and alcohol counselor. I wanna do public service work. I, I would like to help other women, teenagers out there with the same problems I had because nobody knows it better if you didn't walk through it. From the beginning, this coalition has not only focused on women, but has allowed the individuals engaged in sex work to drive the process, guiding us on what we need to do for them. I think that a program like WISH changes the paradigm from tough on crime to smart on crime. With the WISH program, it offers both an immediate course of action that our troopers can take. You know, they can grab the card, they can hand it to the person who's actively engaged in prostitution, or they can work cooperatively with an outreach worker. They can be a resource and try to get this person the help that they need. Policymakers should support this program because it uses interventions which are evidence-based. They're proven to work in providing services to this population. My hope is that through the efforts of the coalition, we're going to do a lot of education of judicial officers, of probation officers, of everybody along the spectrum who interacts with these folks. And um, I think we're going to have a much more effective approach once we are informed. These women are us. They are our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, our cousins, our friends, our neighbors. They are who we are. <laughs>